Welcome to St. Margaret's Church on this, the second Sunday after Christmas, and thank you for joining us for worship today. Uh, please download our bulletin on our website or on your Facebook feed, uh, and follow along with the service. We've got wonderful music, wonderful readings, especially things that you might not hear, because sometimes we roll right into Epiphany. This year we are doing a special Epiphany service on Wednesday night, but for today, this is the second Sunday after Christmas. So, thank you for joining us again. We'll begin very shortly. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, 
that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. They will climb from height to height, 
and the God of gods will reveal himself in Zion. Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. Behold our defender, O God, and look upon the face of your anointing. A reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us, the beloved. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Egypt I have called my son. 
When Herod saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, he was infuriated, and he sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem, who were two years old and under, according to the time that he had learned from the wise men. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who are seeking the child's life are dead. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he had heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee. There he made his home in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Good morning, everyone. Just a quick note um, that prophecies do come true, right? This is not all esoteric because Jeremiah says, I will give my priests their fill of fatness. That has been fulfilled, right? Over the last several weeks, we've done really well in our household. So a very Merry Christmas to you all. And just as a reminder... This is all real. The incarnation, the birth of Jesus, God made man, is real. It's flesh and blood. It's matter, right? Um, this is all not something in theory. It's not just something that we dream about, something that we imagine, or something to make us feel better. This is supposed to be incarnate. What is this? This is love. This is God among us. Right? That is supposed to be real, and it's up to us to make it real. I remember one time uh, when I was young, I had a dream that, um, I think it was myself, I was in a spaceship, and it was being hurtled far away from Earth, and there was no way that I could get back to Earth, and I was all alone in this capsule, and, and it was like a Major Tom experience, where I was just gone forever, right? And I woke up and I was so sure that it was real. You know those dreams that you, you feel are so real? I woke up and I was so sure that I immediately ran into my parents' room and, and it stayed there for probably like a half hour, right? Um, John Sanford writes a book called Dreams, God's Forgotten Language. And he spends a lot of time in Matthew with Joseph. Because if you heard today's gospel lesson, a lot of the stuff that Joseph was warned about came to him in dreams. An angel of the Lord came to Joseph and said, get up and go to Egypt, so the words of the prophet might be fulfilled. Out of Egypt I have called my son. Now, for Joseph to take his young family and go to Egypt, what did that mean? What was Egypt in scripture to a Jew? Egypt was a place of captivity. Egypt was a place of bondage, of hard labor, of slavery. Egypt was a place of death. And yet an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up and go to Egypt. Not go east, not go north, but instead go south to Egypt and wait there. And we don't know how long Joseph had to wait there, probably several years. Jesus was raised in Egypt, but then, in a dream again, Joseph is told that the people seeking Jesus' life are, are now dead, it means, means Herod. So you can go back home now, and you're going to settle in a town called Nazareth, because to fulfill the prophecy, we say he was a Nazarene. So we can go one of several ways here. We can talk about the realness of of God's prophecies, or we can talk about the idea that the things that we do in our lives matter in all this. Even 2,000 years later, what we do, the choices we make, matter. You know, Jeremiah the prophet, and even Isaiah and other prophets talk about the kingdom of God as if it's something that is coming. In Matthew's gospel, Jesus is always talking about the kingdom as being very near at hand. As a matter of fact, Matthew Fox, the writer, talks about the kingdom of God in Matthew's gospel as being actually present. 
It's just kind of a state of mind that one can enter into. I would offer something different, being this is second Sunday after Christmas, we are still in the season of incarnation, that we are not presently in the kingdom of God. And I would even challenge people who may be in a kingdom of God mindset that there is still that rootedness in reality that we need to be aware of. Christmas, especially the days after Christmas, the 12 days after Christmas, are a very special time and a very important time for us to become rooted in the incarnational truth that how we live our lives matters to the kingdom. In other words, if I live my life selfishly, only live for myself, try to gather whatever manna I can and save it up for a rainy day, make sure I don't share it with anyone because I might need it myself. If I live that way, how does that bring the kingdom into the world? If I choose to spend my money on myself lavishly for things that I might not need, maybe just things that I want, how does that further the kingdom's entrance into the world? How does that bring God incarnate into our society? But when I choose to spread my manna out, when I choose to give my leftovers to others, or when I choose to live in such a way that I might not have any leftovers because others are, are being fed as well, does that bring the kingdom into greater focus? Are more people then invited under the tent of God's love? Right. Now is a great time to make God incarnate in your life and really try and take physical hold, meaning real actions, real to-do lists, about how to carry out the gospel imperative to love your neighbor. Right, we might, maybe we've made some resolutions over the last week. And maybe we laugh them off because it's 2020 going into 2021. And we should all just walk really slowly into this new year and make sure we don't break anything, right? But what if we ran into this new year and said, we need to live out the gospel. We need to pay closer attention to the words that Jesus gives us. That our possessions that our love of them, that our love of worldly things can trip us up when we're trying to bring the kingdom into the world. Of God's idea that living selflessly is better than living selfishly. And as a matter of fact, is a great lifesaver for others. How do we understand that just our way of life can be a punishment to other people around the world? This is a great time to remember that these things are not esoteric, they're not theoretical, they're rooted in real life. If ten people are on a lifeboat and one person takes all the supplies for themselves, how are the other nine supposed to survive? That's what our world faces now. And you and I, who are that one person on the lifeboat, how can we incarnate God's love and share our resources? How can we be harbingers or prophets of this kingdom and say, this is the way to live. This is the way to make God incarnate real in the world. By serving others, by feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, visiting those in prison. Those are real things. Let's go do them. Amen. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
Christ, for whom there was no room in the inn, give courage to all who are homeless. In your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Christ, who fled into Egypt, give comfort to all refugees. In your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Christ, who fasted in the desert, give relief to all who are starving. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Christ, who hung in agony on the cross, give strength to all who suffer. In your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord of the Church, hear our prayer and make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with you. Peace, peace, peace. Peace. Peace with you all. And again, a very Merry Christmas to you. I don't know what day this is. This is probably about the 10th day of Christmas on the 3rd. About the 10th day or so. And Epiphany is going to be on Wednesday. And since it's midweek, we decided just to do a simple evening prayer. It's going to be at 8 o'clock on Wednesday night uh, with me on Facebook Live. Uh, it'll be posted to our fa to our website as well. But that's going to be on Epiphany night, January 6th, to celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany where the three wise men come to visit Jesus. And it has different flavors all over the world. But uh, we're going to do evening prayer that night. Please join us if you are able to. And then next week, really from now through Lent, or from a time that we can gather back together, we're going to be pre-recording these services and then have a presence with you on Sunday. Uh, we don't know what that's going to look like, but stay tuned in your announcements for more information about that. Because while we do our pre-recorded services for Sunday, we also know that a lot of you want some interaction with maybe Patty, uh, maybe not me so much, but um, we're going to do something fun on Sunday uh, where you'll have some interaction with the clergy and with each other too, kind of like a virtual coffee hour. So we're discussing some ways in which to do that and that will be put forth shortly. Also, I want to let everyone know that on January 24th is our annual meeting. It will take place on Zoom. We will be electing new vestry members, uh, but we believe that we have enough for just a slate to carry it through. The people up for election this year are, if I can get it right in alphabetical order, Let's see, we have um, David Allen, we have um, Kathy Lang, no, Alden Gross is next, and then Kathy Lang, and then Susan Roberts, no, and then Chris Prender, all right? Uh, these are wonderful people, strong members of the parish who will serve you well in their uh, posts as vestry members. So. We look forward to getting to know more of them in this uh, month's edition of the Spire, which is coming out, when is that coming out again? Do we know? Mid-January or so? All right, mid-January. Look for more information on the Spire, but uh, wonderful nominations. Thank you, David, Chris, Kathy, Susan, and Alden. Thank you for serving uh, on Vestry coming up, and uh, we'll, sing, we'll be saying goodbye to several Vestry members as well, um, who will stay here, obviously, in ministry. We thank them for their service at the annual meeting, January 24th. All right, stay tuned for more information. And boss, now, boss, boss, I got an announcement. Oh, yeah, go ahead. I have an announcement. Uh -huh. Tomorrow night, January 4th, Monday, starts our new book study. Oh. Uh, yeah, Bishop Curry's book, The Way of Love. Our study will be led by Beth Arruda and Mary Holstein. So that will begin at 7 o'clock. Um, if you've already signed up with me, if you've been in book study before on Monday night, then... You'll get the email, the link to the Zoom meeting. If you haven't and you'd like to join us, please email me. And I have uh, some extra copies of the book in my office, should you need one and not be able to find one on Amazon or Biblio or in books or some other independent bookseller. Plug there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> stop by my office and I can arrange for you to get one. All right, that's it for me. And if you need more information about Bishop Curry's The Way of Love, just Google his royal wedding sermon. Because he kind of spells it out there. A lot of a lot of us kind of, you know, remember that as a time that he came up on the big stage. And so, uh, do do that class Monday night, starting tomorrow night. The way of love, Bishop Curry. It's going to be a lot of fun. And thank you, Beth and Mary, for leading it. We do uh, we do appreciate that. 
We also want to celebrate birthdays and anniversaries on the first Sunday in January. So if you have a birthday or an anniversary in the month of January, please stand up or sit down and pay attention. All right. Almighty God, bless these your children as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they go. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, give them your peace, which passes all understanding. Help them to grow in love with each other and with you. And may they live out their days in good health and service to you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. A very warm happy birthday to all of you and happy anniversary if you got married in January. Thank you all very much for joining us. And now, ascribe to the Lord the honor to God's name. Bring offerings and come into God's courts. to the Lord our God. It is right, right to give God, God thanks and praise. praise. It is right, and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ will come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray together. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and as forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God of promise, you have prepared a banquet for us. Happy are those who are called to the Supper of the Lamb. of God for the people of God. Take these gifts in remembrance that Christ lived and died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Loving, Loving God, God, whose word has come among us in the holy child of Bethlehem, Bethlehem. May, may the light of faith illumine our hearts and shine in our words and deeds through him who is Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the grace of Jesus Christ, who is the same today, yesterday, and forever, lead you to the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit 
and prepare you for the greater joy which is to come.